Assuming you own a Moodle site or working on some and the content doesn't load properly or the performance is drastically low. So you don't need to hit your head, rather we need to understand why it happened in the first place. So we are going to talk about some of the reasons why it can happen and I'm going to tell you one of simple optimization trick by which you can speed up the performance of your site. So stay tuned. Now if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and hit the like button at the end of this video. I have this website called as examhooks which is built on Moodle framework and I am going to use the same for demonstration. But before that let's make some instructions for ourselves and list down the items which we need to do in next few minutes. So basically I am going to restructure the Moodle data folder. As you already be knowing that Moodle data is a folder that contains user files, course files, site languages, cached and other informations. So it is created in the Moodle installation process at the beginning. And the location can be outside the Moodle folder which is your core folder and by default it can be called as Moodle data but the folder name can be custom. So these three folders cache, local cache and temp we are targeting to move out. Now how do we know that this would work perfectly? The answer is that these three folders are used by Moodle for storing temporary or mostly used files. So if they can be redirected to faster drives independent of Moodle data directory, then performance can be even faster. That's my thought, but you can actually apply this approach and test it on your websites and absorb the performance. So I'm going to use this website called as examhook and see how the performance is getting boosted by changing this folder structure. So I'm going to log in as an admin on this website examhooks and I'm going to navigate through some of the pages to see how fast they load and we can note down the timing in the dev tool as well. So let's log in at first and on this it will redirect to the dashboard page at first. So I'm navigating as of now just like that. So let's go to the profile page simply and right click and inspect element. It will open the dev tool you need to go to the networks and see if nothing is there you can reload the page and then you will see all the files all the cache all the images all the resources used in the website can be listed over here and how much milliseconds they are taking to load onto this page you can note down the performance and time taken before making any changes in the Moodle data architecture and later use it for comparison. My website is hosted on Hostinger, a Linux based server and this is the interface I get. Here I'll go to the file manager to see my Moodle directory structure as you can see on the screen. I have already opened in a separate tab. Now here we are not talking about the server architecture where your website is hosted. It could be either AWS hosted or Google Cloud or anywhere. But what you need to check here is the config.php file. Open it and locate the path for data directory folder. Where is the path for data directory installation? Depending on the hosting environment, the interface can be different. So please do not confuse if you do not get the same look and feel as I'm using. It's totally fine. So here in the config.php file, as you can see, cfg data root, which is the path for Moodle data folder. So you just need to locate that where exactly this is. In this one, I'm going to go to the domains and it will list me examux.online folder, which contains my Moodle data folder. This is the architecture of a Moodle data folder. You have cache file directory language, local cache, sessions, and all the temporary files in this folder structure. Basically, we're going to target cache, local cache, and temp folder to move out of the Moodle data folder. Now, before we do any further changes in the architecture, let's get back to the 
to do list or the set of instructions we were following earlier so we have written cache local cache and temp now we are going to see what exactly and how we are going to do the restructuring of the data folder so i'm just going to write one by one all the steps as a first step we need to locate the data folder path which is mentioned in the config.php file which we have already done so let's jump to the second step which is to create a new folder outside the model data folder or anywhere so basically as per your wish you can create it anywhere in the structure or outside the structure i'm going to create a new folder over here itself so it can be anything as per your wish make sure that you have something which is easily identifiable i'm just going to write as data folder cache which i think it's already existing so let me just make it again as custom data no this is still existing just make it as a custom data folder which is fine it will take it so just to avoid confusion let me delete the old folder which is not needed right now as you can see on the screen i have created a custom folder and right now i'm going to go inside the model data folder and identify the folders which we are going to move into that newly created folder so these are the three folders so let's just write our next step we are done with the second step here let me just put it down here like go to model data and move out these three folders called as cache local cache and temp into the newly created folder which is custom data folder now let's go back to the website and move it actually into the new folder all the steps and the instructions i'm mentioning over here i'm going to put it into the video description box so you can follow up there now we'll go to the file manager and right now i'm going to move all these three folders into a different location which is nothing but the new custom data folder i'm going to select this and move out so basically we're done with this step as well as of now you can see inside the model data folder those three folders are not there so we are fine as of now now i'm going to give you a heads up to you guys that please do not log in as an admin onto the website while this process is going on because the three folders will be created automatically again so what happens basically is on a page refresh moodle will rebuild the cache folders once again in few seconds so we need to make sure that doesn't happen so all these instructions you can follow while doing all these steps very carefully i'm taking as much time so that you guys can follow up easily and do along with this video now the next step involves changing in the config.php file like you need to go to the config.php file which i have already opened it here and downloaded it as well so that i can show you in a editor with a better structure so this is my config.php file i am going to write some code over here like cfg arrow cache directory is equal to the path of the cache directory here you should know that the cfg cache directory is shared by the cluster nodes and dollar cfg local cache directory is not shared by the cluster nodes and dollar cfg temp is basically moodle temp file directory on server file system so you should know like in moodle architecture it is permitted to set all this local cache directory in cache directory to a different folder on the local server which can make some things slightly faster so i'm just going to write down so that you can see like what exactly these are meant for so the paths for 
custom cache directory folder, the path for custom local cache directory folder, and the path for custom temp directory folder. All this we need to mention. So I have already taken all the path from the server. Um, I'm just gonna copy it from here and paste in the config.php file like this. Similarly, all other path I'm gonna copy and paste it over here. Now, as I have mentioned earlier also, like we need to give read and write access to this folder or the path where exactly your new custom data folder is created. So I'm just gonna copy the name. I have used an old one, so I'm just gonna paste it. Make sure that the path is correct or the site won't work. I'm just gonna cross check once again. Yeah, all these file paths are correct. Seems to be fine everything. Now let's get back to the config.php and copy all these three lines and paste it on the server's config.php file and save it. And then we can finally check how much it has affected the performance. Now, if you're making the changes in a production side, make sure everything is fine. So in this case, it seems everything is in the place. Now let's save and close and then go back to our website and check it once again. I'm just gonna reload this front page and see how fast this can load. As you can see, it has loaded quite well as compared to the previously. And now we'll just inspect element and see via DevOps tools in the network and reload once again so that we can track the time of loading of all the resources. You can track it here, compare to the old scenario what we have observed earlier. As you can see, it's going well till now. Now let's log in and check the pages inside maybe dashboard and profile where we have tested earlier the same pages we are going to load once again as you can see the performance has been increased comparatively to the one which we have seen earlier in the beginning of this video you can go back to the beginning of this video and check it or you can do the testing on your own application Do not worry if you have missed some of the steps. I am going to mention all these instructions and the line of code which you need to put in the config.php file in my description box of this video and you can take the reference from there itself. So we are done with all the steps over here. Now login as an admin and you can do the purge cache if you have some issues loading with the contents and that will take care of. So let me just quickly finish all the steps over here so that I can share it with you later on. I'm pretty much sure that you would be knowing this step, how to purge cache in Moodle application. So you can take care of this step. I think we are done here with all the steps. You can close the video here if you do not wish to continue and go and implement these steps as instructed or if you want to stay then additionally I can show you how you can check the size of the Moodle data individual folder and how much space it can take up on the server. I have implemented the same solution on other website so trust me the performance is boosted to a good level. So this command I am running over here as you can see the individual space contribution from each folder and this is the custom folder known as itra cache and i'm gonna see how much space is has taken 
Now, there are other performance boosting techniques which I am going to share with you guys eventually in my other videos. So stay in touch with us. You think this video was helpful to you? Give it a like and subscribe to Moodler Arjun. Thank you and enjoy.